So let's look at how we can use the NetAlly LinkRunner AT2000 to troubleshoot some Ethernet link problems. So in this case, I come in and I run an auto test to see if I can link to a device at the far end. I can't. So when I can't link to that device, one of the first things I do is I go in and I run a cable test to see if the cable's good and if I'm connected to anything. My results show me all my pairs are good clear out to the end. So I can tell the cable's good, I'm just not connected to a switch. So let's try that again. We are going to run the test and we're going to see if we can connect. Can't connect. So what do I do? I go back in and I run the cable test. In this case, our cable test results are going to show us that pairs 1 and 2 are broken at 34.1 feet. So if I ever want this cable to work, I got to fix those pairs. Fixed the pairs, connected it to the switch, still no link. I run my auto test, nothing. So what is going on here? I know my cable's good because I had tested it before. I connected it to the switch. So I come in here and I run my cable test. My cable test comes back and what it shows me is that I am connected to the switch, but it's not powered on. In this case, we're connected to a switch, but that switch port is disabled. So I enabled the switch port. I tested the cable. I'm going to run the test again, still no link. So I come in and I run my cable test. My cable test tells me that pair one and two is bad again, but I am connected to the switch because you see those aren't open at the far end. So finally, I got the cable fixed. I got it connected to the switch. Switch port's enabled. Good sign. We've got our link light. We've got our transmit light. Now we're getting an IP address. We're getting our link. We can even zoom in to that link right there and see what speed and duplex we're connected at. Success. Let's take a look at how I test PoE using the NetAlly LinkRunner AT2000. First thing I'm going to do is come in here to Tools and I'm going to turn on my PoE test. So I'm going to hit this to enable it. Now it's always a good idea to enable true power and put in the requested class of service that we're looking for. So in this case, I want 13 watts of power or class 3 PoE. Then I'm going to hit Save. I'm going to go back and I'm going to hit run my auto test. So now auto test is going to establish a link and it's not only going to measure the unloaded PoE voltage, it's going to apply that load to this connection and we can see right here that we are able to get our 13 watts of power and our unloaded voltage and our loaded voltage are about the same. This lets us know we've got a good PoE connection. Now what happens when there's too much resistance along the path between our switch and our end device? Well, let's do a quick PoE test here and see what that looks like. So in this case, I've run my PoE test and we notice that when we come up here, we see that we requested 13 watts of power, but we only got 5.5 watts. And when we look at our voltages, our unloaded voltage where we didn't apply the load was 53 volts and our loaded was only 41. This lets us know that this link is incapable of providing the power we need to run the device we're going to plug into it. So we want to investigate where this resistance is coming from or whether the switch just isn't capable of providing enough PoE. So in this case, hey, PoE failed. This link's not going to work for what we need it for. So we need to get it fixed. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can ensure that we're getting the speed and duplex we expect out of our link. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to run my auto test. And like in previous videos that we've done, we can see that we connect up. We've got our PoE. But in this case, we're going to focus in on our link. So let's get rid of that PoE. We don't need to see that information. We're going to come down here and this tells us that our receive pair is normal, our polarity is normal, our level is normal. And most importantly, right here, it's telling us that the switch is advertising. It can do 10, 100, or gig, half, or full duplex. This tells us that the switch is auto-negotiating 
and it's capable of doing up to 1 gigabit per second. Now I've moved over to a port that isn't performing as well. So let's go in and run our auto test on this port and see what's going on with that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hide that PoE again. We're going to come down here and expand our link. Now, in this case, it tells us up there at the top that this, is, this port is doing 100 half duplex. Well, here's the crazy thing. I know that that port was set to 100 full. So, switches stop advertising their speed and duplex when we force the speed and duplex. This goes to half duplex when it doesn't see that auto negotiation. So, in this case, the client would be set to 100 half, the switch set to 100 full. That is bad news. So, we can use the Net Ally Link Runner AT2000 to go in and help us identify where we run into things like duplex problems on our network. Now that I've established a good link with my connection, I want to make sure that I can get a DHCP address. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to run an auto test. We can come down, we can look at our IPv4 DHCP. Now, our NetAlly Link Runner AT2000 sent a DHCP Discover. To that, we got an offer. We sent back a request, we got an ACK. In this case, we can see our DHCP address is valid. There's no other devices using this DHCP address. We can see the subnet and the server that gave us this address. This is exactly what we want to see when everything's working correctly. Now let's take a look at some of the things that can go wrong with DHCP. So I'm going to run my auto test. I come in here. I'm going to see I get a DHCP address of 192.168.1.10. That's not one of the subnets that I have in my network. This is a great indication that we've got a rogue DHCP server out here. Could be somebody plugged in a router from home and now it's handing out DHCP addresses on my production network. Now here's another example of where things could go wrong. I run my auto test. I get a good link. I'm connected at gig full duplex. But I'm not getting a DHCP address. So I'm sitting here waiting and waiting. Now what can cause this? This could be a case where I'm connected to a network that doesn't have a DHCP server on it. Everything has to have static addresses. This could be a network where the DHCP server has run out of addresses. The DHCP pool has been exhausted. So this lets me know I've got a good link, but I can't get a DHCP address. And without an address, I'm not going to get anywhere. So it's these types of problems that we can troubleshoot when it comes to getting DHCP addresses when we're using the NetAlly Link Runner AT2000. How many times have you found yourself underneath a desk looking at a wall plate that isn't clearly marked, or you have no idea what switch and port this connects to? Well, in this case, we're going to look at how we can use the NetAlly Link Runner AT2000 to get a quick answer to that. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use the switch test for this. And I'm going to hit that switch test. And right here it tells me I'm connected to Studio Switch 1, which is a Netgear Gigabit Smart Switch. It gives me the IP address of the switch and it tells me what port I'm on. It also tells me I'm connected at Gig Full Duplex. So now if I want to go in and change the configuration of this port, I don't have to go back to the wiring closet and try and track down where this port's connected. I know. I can log into that switch. I can make my changes to port gig 7. And I am all set to go. This is how we can quickly tell where we're connected and get the information we need to connect to that switch to change the configuration. A common cause of network issues is troubles with DNS and resolving names to IP addresses. So let's come in. We're going to run our auto test on our network here. What we find is that as part of our auto test, we are going to test each DNS server that we're given by our DHCP server. So in this case, we're given two DNS servers, 10.0.0.46 and 75.75.75.75. When we look at our results, we see that our test going out to 10.0.0.46 failed. This indicates that we're having trouble communicating with this DNS server. When it comes to resolving names, this can result in timeouts and slowdowns when we're trying to use the network. So it's key 
that when we go in and test our network, we ensure that all of our DNS servers are working properly, and if they're not, we troubleshoot it and figure out what's going on. So this is how we can use the NetAlly Link Runner AT2000 to validate that our DNS servers are working properly. Just because I get a link and a DHCP address doesn't tell me I can get to those key resources I need to get to to get my job done. So in this case, we're going to look at how we can configure the NetAlly Link Runner AT2000 to test those resources. I'm going to come down here to Tools. I'm going to go to my Auto Test Configuration. Here is where I can enter IP addresses and DNS names of those key resources. If I put in a port number, it's going to do a TCP SYN connection to those devices. If I leave that out, it's just going to do a ping. So let's go in and run an auto test and test our connectivity. So after we establish our link, we get an address, we're going to go in and start testing the connectivity to each of those resources. So as we come down here, we can see that we can get to NetAlly, we can get to my email server, both on the SMTPS and the IMAPS ports. I can get out to Google, and, oh, let's go back to targets again, and I can get to my IP PBX. So this lets me know that I can get to all those key resources I need to get to. I know everything's working fine. This is how I can use my NetAlly LinkRunner AT2000 to validate connectivity to key resources.